And you know, Charles, I just want to share two or three little miracles with you because I want to show you the power of God and what God can do through you, an ordinary believer. And how many of you out there are just ordinary people? Ordinary people, that's exactly the kind of person that God wants, is an ordinary person. We were in Fort Myers, Florida, not too long before we came here. And if you're sensitive to the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God can do the supernatural and the miraculous through you. We had a, we had a, just a one service there to, to ha so that we could talk to people in Fort Myers about the healing explosion here. And as Charles and I were sitting at the book table, which we often do autographing books before a service, I saw them bringing in a lady who was in ob obviously in tremendous pain. And you could just see every step as they lifted her up, she would go, oh, oh, and you could just see the pain that she was in. And so when, she's, when they got her or as far in as the bookstore, I said, honey, what's your problem? And she said, I have a back problem that has, I have such excruciating pain, I cannot stand it. Now, normally, I would do something right then and there. Charles and I lay hands on many people at book tables, and we've seen many people get out of wheelchairs. I always say, get out, you can enjoy it much better sitting in a pew than in a wheelchair. And so, uh, but for some reason on this particular night, I did not feel led to do anything at that time. But we went in, and, uh, and they were singing when we went in, and when the pastor introduced us, the Lord really spoke to my heart. And, and how many of you believe you ought to always listen to God? Yes, listen to God. Put your own desires aside and listen to God. Now, many of you are going to be healed tonight because you're going to listen to what God tells you to do instead of what your fleshly desire tells you to do. And so God said, give him a scripture. And so I got up and I said, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And then I used one of Paul's scriptures, not Paul's scriptures, but what Paul said, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith may not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And so I said, I want that lady that has that tremendous pain to come up here right now because you're going to get healed. And I want to show you what happens when you're sensitive to God because I'm talking about somebody else's sensitivity to God. This woman had had a back problems for years as a result of a horrible accident. She had gone to chiropractor after chiropractor, reminds me of the woman with the issue of blood, been to doctor after doctor after doctor, had spent all of her money. There was absolutely nothing that they could do for her. And in spite of the highest type of painkiller medicine that there was, there was nothing that would relieve the pain. Now this woman is a Christian and she said, God, I cannot stand it any longer. I know that suicide is wrong, but I can no longer stand the pain. <clears throat> so she said, I'm going down to the freeway and I'm going to throw myself in front of a speeding car and get it over with. And I ask you to forgive me because I cannot tolerate this pain anymore. So she went down to the freeway and she was walking along, deciding which car to pick to jump out in front of her. And God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I am with you always. And she stepped back a little tiny bit and a car pulled off the highway. A car pulled off the highway. And they got out and they said, can we help you? God told us to stop. Now, would you like to know where they were going when they stopped? to a hunter miracle service. So this girl, told, all right, this girl told, uh, told exactly what had happened and they said, get in the car, we're going to a healing service, we'll take you there and you can get healed. And how many of you know what God did to her? Totally healed her, she ran down off of the steps, she was totally and completely healed by the power of God. Because of people being sensitive to the Spirit of God, pulling off a highway to pick up somebody walking along the street. Well, that was a good way to start off a miracle service. I maybe agree with that. Then Charles had a word of knowledge, and I got the same word of knowledge. We both had a, somebody that had a tremendous pain in the collarbone, and Charles said it could actually 
be broken. So this uh, man, man suddenly came out of the back of the audience. He came up. His arm was in a sling, and we discovered later that he was in a t complete harness. And when he came up, we said, what's the problem? He said, I fell out of a tree and broke the collarbone. I tore up my groin. And uh, would you be quiet up there, please? Ushers, will you put a stop they, this? Did we they tell you, you can't to... hear? Oh, he's here. Are you here? Well, come on down. The man with the broken collarbone? Well, okay, come on down. down. I'm sorry. They said, well, bless your heart. Hallelujah. Come on down. He's here. Oh, he's here. Oh, he's here. Well, praise hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise glory, the Lord. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. Look at him run. Look at him run. Hallelujah. You, All right. Praise God. Now, he'll have to stand here as we tell his story, and then he can... Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Great. Richard Dunnelin. Yeah. I'm right, pretty close on the name. Look at this. You know what? Let you tell the story, because this is a story of a believer who laid hands on him. Charles and I did not lay hands on him. Hallelujah. Isn't God good to send Thank people you, like Jesus. this? Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm we gonna didn't go even ahead. know he was here. I'm going to go ahead with part of your story. Uh, because I want you to hear what happened that night because that's what's about to happen in the next few minutes here. I said, uh, what, what is the problem? He said a broken collarbone and a groin and a hip that was damaged badly and he was in excruciating pain. And so uh, I said, okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to demonstrate how easily it is to, to teach people how to heal the sick. Now, we've taught these people that are on healing teams tonight for 12 hours of video. They've had to study the book to heal the stick thoroughly, and they've been in live teaching the last two days uh, under doctors and chiropractor panels and so forth, learning different methods to heal the sick. So I said, I'm going to simply demonstrate that, and I want somebody in the audience who has never ministered healing to anybody, but who does have the baptism, who speaks in tongues, but you've had that desire. And a young lady and a man jumped up, and the young lady came up first, and I said, now I'm going to show you in one easy lesson how to heal a broken bone. And so I had, you're the one, right? <laughs> He's all in this thing. So I had her come over, and I said, now you do exactly like I tell you, because believe me, if you go out praying some crazy ways, and Jesus never prayed for a sick person on earth, Jesus healed the sick, or else he cast out the devil and they were well. And those two basic methods, and he used different ways to apply the power of God. And I said, you lay, it was over on this shoulder, wasn't it? I said, lay your hand over there. And she laid her hand up like that. And I said, now say this with authority. Bone, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come back together. Were they crushed bones? Fractured bone. Fractured bone. I said, in Jesus' name, bones, come back together. And we told him to take his hand out of that sh uh, sling and to move his arm. Well, he is in a harness, and the usher reached up under your shirt, shirt. didn't he? <laughs> Took it off, and we uh, said, move it, just like Jesus said, stretch forth your arm, and here he is. You do it now instead of me. Do what you did. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. In all the pain left. All the pain. Perfect healing. Okay, now, so the other man had jumped up. I said, come on up. And he had this groin problem and a hip problem. Do I remember the story right? And so I said, okay. And I told him to sit down. And I said, now I'm going to give you one easy lesson. I remember these people tonight that are going to be ministering to you have had all of this training. They, they are ready for anything. In fact, today, if a tiger had walked past, they'd have eaten him up because they're ready for bear. They're ready for big things tonight. I mean, it doesn't matter because we've already told them that there's nothing different. God like sin isn't big sin or little sin, neither is sickness. It's just sickness, and they're ready to attack wheelchairs. They're ready to attack uh, Alzheimer's, anything. Else. They don't care. They're ready, and they may eat you up before they heal you. I don't know. They're <laughs> excited about this. Well, this young man, I said, sit down in a chair. I had this other man hold his legs out because when you have a back problem or a groin problem, it'll pull your body and you'll have a short leg. And I said, okay, now you hold his leg and you watch what happens when you use the name of Jesus and the power of God. And he said, in Jesus' name, as I told him, taught him this one thing, in Jesus' name, groin, I command you to be healed and I command that hip to be restored in the name of Jesus. His leg grew out. And what did you do then? ran and jumped and did uh, knee bends and things I just couldn't do. <laughs> it was all perfectly healed, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now Charles, we have to ask you the most excited. Tell, right, tell him what you had planned on doing, but which was canceled because of your broken collarbone, and then tell him what God did, okay? I had planned to go on a, uh, a choir trip to Europe uh, to 
go to more than um, 15 different churches in four different countries, and I couldn't go because I was going to have to have an operation on my collarbone. But Jesus took care of that. The doctor told you not to go with it. That's right. And I had, I had x-rays taken the next week. They confirmed the healing. I also went to a chiropractor who, told, who I'd been seeing for several years, and he said, this, this is the first time I've seen you in a normal condition. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, Isn't Hallelujah. that beautiful? All right. Okay, now, now, when he broke his collarbone, they had to cancel him out of the tour because the doctor wouldn't let him go. And then he gets healed on Saturday night. Supposed to leave on Tuesday. How many of you believe that God would have liked for him to have gone on that trip? You tell him what God did for you. I went on that trip, and I'm here to tell you about it. We had a wonderful time ministering the music for, for the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, what did God say to you back there when you were getting healed? You didn't know this at the time. The youth pastor leaned over to me, and he said, he was supposed to go on the choir tour with us, and because he broke his collarbone, we had to get some, we had to get a substitute for him. But he said, would you believe what happened just five minutes before church started tonight? He said, somebody called and had to cancel out. They can't go on the trip. So he said, as soon as he finishes talking, getting it, being excited about being healed, I'll let him know he can go on the trip. Uh, Isn't that just like give Jesus? Give Jesus a praise <laughs> offering. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's so exciting to us. Glory. You see, we didn't even know he was here. And, 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 and so now I want to tell you something. Everybody says, oh, those stories, they don't really happen. How many of you believe those stories really do yes, happen? Yes, yes, There yes, you yes. go. You can read his story. He is in our new uh, issue of our newspaper that just came out. His picture is in there and the story concerning the fabulous healing of God. But the thing that we think is so fantastic, did you hear him say that the x-ray showed an absolutely perfect collarbone? Did you hear that? Now, who did the healing? This little girl over here who had been backslidden just f until four months before, had never laid hands on the sick in her entire life, and she came up, and she was the one that God used. The power of God went through her into that collarbone and healed her. You see, this is God's message for the body of Christ at this hour. He says, you go do it. You go do it. Don't wait until Charles and Francis get there. You go do it because you've got as much power as they have. Amen, Charles? Amen. Now, I, want to, I, I do want to share one little thing because By I'm, the way, uh, before she does that, what is going to happen, and you might as well know in advance, uh, so far as we know, about 1,200 people here have been going through this training, and uh, there's, uh, what, 9,500 people maybe here tonight, 9,000 or something, and so they've got enough time to literally drive that devil right out that aisle again or any sickness out of your body. And they're going to be doing that. But more important than that, what we found out from that Pittsburgh healing explosion, the first one last July the 4th, these people went back to their churches, their communities, their works, their job, their schools, and they didn't have any better sense than to continue to heal the sick and preach the gospel and cast out devils. And it was awesome to see what really happened. And that's a message of Jesus Christ today that all believers, not just in a big, beautiful cathedral like this, but they're going to do it wherever they go, down the street. What was the story in the book of Acts? Go back and read it. I'd urge every one of you to read the book of Acts this week. And when you do, picture what happened here tonight. And then picture, if you can chase some of these people, follow them around the same same thing is going to be happening and then you watch as the end time harvest comes up you watch as these people go out and they bring this one into the kingdom with signs and wonders this one and this one and they begin to multiply themselves and those people that they lead into the kingdom and they minister the baptism and they minister healing these same people are going to take off as badly a fanatic as they are and it won't take but just a short time for this end time harvest to come together and Jesus will be back when the whole world has heard the gospel of Jesus Jesus Christ. Dr. Richard O'Ellen, I'm going to ask you to come up here for a moment. He told me a very exciting story at the dinner table tonight. He has shown the videotapes on how to heal the sick four times to the church that he pastors. And I want you to tell the congregation what happens when people get turned on about going out and healing the sick. It's really marvelous. We've shown these tapes a number of times now, and we've had a group that's been different just about every time. And these folks come in and they've never healed the sick before. After the first two hours, 
of teaching, the first lesson is laying on of hands. And so the first time we did this, uh, as soon as we were done, we asked if there was anybody who needed healing, and somebody jumped up right away. And it was a man who had a deaf ear. And I asked for someone to come forward who had never healed the sick before. And this young man, he jumps up, and he comes forward, and I said, what are you going to do? And he said, well, I'm going to lay hands on him and command his ear to be open. And he did, and it did, and everybody got very excited. <laughs> and every time we have shown the tapes, immediately after, whatever it is that the teaching has been on, that's exactly the miracle that is ministered to that particular way. And it has just happened consistently again and again and again. As I said, we've shown the tapes now about four times through. And each time these folks come in, they get very excited about healing the sick. And they go out and they start doing it like Charles and Francis are saying. They do it everywhere. They'll do it in restaurants. They'll do it on the job. People are getting saved. They're getting healed. It's really marvelous. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Thank you. O'Wellen. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you how we praise God for these doctors and chiropractors who have been working with us, who confirm these signs and these wonders and miracles that follow. And I want you all to understand something because some of you, may, having not been here for the teaching, may not understand what we're talking about when we say that the, the, the spirit-filled believer is the one who, minister, who will minister healing to you tonight. If I were to ask you who healed the sick, those of you who had not been at our healing sessions would probably say Jesus. But however, we've trained our people that that is not really the one who does the healing today. Jesus retired 2,000 years ago. He went to heaven and he said, all right, now I'm retired. I'm giving you the job. I'm going to come and I'm going to live on the inside of you. I'm going to fill you with the Holy Spirit of God. You're going to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit of God. Then you are going to be my hands on this earth because my power is in you and you can use the authority that's in my name. And how many of you know that the name of Jesus is above the name of every disease? There is no disease that is is higher than the name of Jesus. There is no disease that has not been healed by the name of Jesus and by the power of God's Holy Spirit. <clears throat> but, and I love this pastor and his spirit of religion that's now gone. Praise God See, for the... Jesus is a master. We're the servant. He gets the glory as we do the work. Sickness does not glorify Jesus. And when we go out and just pray for the sick and they don't get healed, except on rare occasions, that does not glorify Jesus when they stay sick. But if we go out and perform the miracles with God's power in the name of Jesus to glorify the Father in the Son, Jesus, then he's glorified by the miracles and by the salvation and the baptism. We are the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. But we need to understand. Everybody put your hands in front of you. Everybody. Say those are the hands of Jesus. Those are the hands of Jesus. They can do the same things Jesus did. They can do the same things Jesus did. Because his word says so. Because his word says so. Then say if Charles and Francis can do it. If Charles and Francis can do it. I can do it too. I can do it too. Say if Jesus did it. If Jesus did it. I can do it too. I can do it too. As a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. I can even do greater things than Jesus did. I can even do greater things than Jesus because did. Because his word says so. Because his word says so. Jesus said if you're a believer that you're going to go out and do the same things that he did. And then he said even greater things would you do because he goes to be with his father. When we obey Jesus and perform that which he commanded us, authorized us, uh, commissioned us to do, to add to the kingdom of God, then Jesus is truly glorified. We're here for nothing except to magnify the name of Jesus. And in Acts uh, 5.12, many times we can read the Bible and never really understand what it says. How many of you know that Jesus never prayed for one sick person? He healed them. Jesus never prayed for the sick. You can study the Bible from beginning to end, and he never prayed for a sick person. He healed them. He the, prayed the, a lot, but not yes, for the Yes, he sick. prayed a lot. You better pray a lot if you're going to heal the sick. Amen. But he didn't pray when he laid hands on them. He healed them exactly like the Word of God says. And it says in Acts 5, 12, And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. Through whose hands? 
the hands of the apostles. All right, in Acts 6, 8, it says, And Stephen, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Who did them? Stephen is the one who did them. If we can just get that spirit of religiosity out of us and we can realize that it is the believer that Jesus has commissioned to go out into the world today and to lay hands upon the sick and to understand that you have within you the same power that Jesus had when he was on this earth. Now you'll notice Jesus did not do a single miracle until he had received the Holy Spirit. But once he had received the Holy Spirit, then he was able to do miracles. And the same thing is true of you and me today. You and I have a power that is within us that we need to let go. We need to unleash it. We need to believe that that power that is within us is a strong power. How many of you believe there's only one Holy Spirit? The same Holy Spirit that came down upon Jesus is the same Spirit that came on you people tonight. The same Spirit that came in me when I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. There is only one Holy Spirit. And is it is that Spirit that gives you the power to go out and to lay hands upon the sick. Russ Bixler, uh, who is president of Channel 40 in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, wrote an article for us, and we're going to put it in a new book. And he said, 10 years ago, I heard what Charles and Francis are preaching through another great Lutheran man. And he said, I had too much religion, too much false modesty, and too much pride to say, I heal the sick. He said, I said, oh, I can't heal a fly. Now that's a lie of the devil, but we chase the devil out of here tonight because God's word says, Jesus said to you as the believer, you go and lay hands on the sick. And I especially love it in the Living Bible. It said, and heal the sick and heal the sick. God wants you well, but God wants you to be healed when believers lay hands on you. Now there are many of you in here tonight who will think when you walk out this door, I didn't get my healing. Don't you dare let the devil talk to you. Now the reason I say that, you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to discover that God's healing power is genuine and real on November the 5th, 1985. Many people lose their healing because they let doubt and unbelief come in their life. We had a man in one of our services recently who died seven times in one service. How many of you know, what do you do in a miracle service when somebody dies? Hallelujah. Well, Charles saw that old spirit of death coming out of him while we were waiting for the paramedics to get there, and he kept commanding the spirit to go back in him. Seven times it came out, seven times it went back in him, and we were praising the Lord. Finally, they took the man out in a coma. But... He had a heart attack, he had emphysema, and he had diabetes. Three real killers. And I'll tell you, I walked down there and after he had the heart attack, I walloped him and I said, brother, I just laid hands on him and he had a heart attack. I walloped him, I said, brother, I didn't lay hands on you for a heart attack, I laid hands on you for a new heart. Now act like it. And his son said, the man goes, Ugh. Give me some nitroglycerin. Then his son said to me, he's got emphysema. I tell you, I was really mad at the devil. So I got a hold of this guy having a heart attack, jerked his head forward, hit him on the back. And I said, in Jesus' name, I speak new lungs into you. How many of you believe that we have the power to call into being those things which be not as though they were? When you step out there, act like you've got that power. So I said, I speak new lungs into you. And then his son said to me, he's got diabetes besides. I thought, oh, how much more can we have? So I said, well, of course, just having been healed of diabetes, I have no problem. I, I mean, I just believe God's got a whole warehouse of, of pancreases just hanging up there with everybody's names on them, and you have not because you ask not. I tell you, last night, what a demonstration we had of the Spirit of God as people came forward to be healed. And so I just walloped him in the pancreas area, and I said, in Jesus' name, I speak a new pancreas in you. And with that, he goes, and falls over the pew. Well... 
Eventually, the, the paramedics came. I will tell you this, that uh, at the end, I mean, what do you do for an encore after something like that? I just looked out the audience and I very weakly said, if any of you would like for us to lay hands on you, we'll be glad to. And I'll tell you, you never saw such a fast exodus in your whole life. Everybody in the church got up and ran out. We had the shortest prayer line in the history of our ministry. But I want to show you something. How many of you believe that if you had had a heart attack and then you were to dying with emphysema and you had diabetes and all these things are piling up on you at one time and they had to haul you off unconscious on a stretcher how many of you believe that your faith could have run out your feet you think it could have done that how many of you would have said I have faith to believe I receive a new heart and I receive a new pancreas and I receive a new everything I have to be honest I don't know if I'd have that much faith but some two hours later there came a knock on our door and it was this man's son and he said my father said I wasn't to go to bed tonight until I delivered a message to you I said what's the message he said my father said to tell you that he still has faith to believe he received a new heart I said he got it he got it he got it I tell you that stinking devil will try and steal your healing when you go out of here but don't you let the devil steal your healing you see, this man did not let down. I'm not kidding you. If I had gone out in a stretcher, I probably would have thought, wow, I sure didn't get it tonight. But that man did not lose his healing. Would you like to know what he was doing one week later? He was dancing on the stage of this Mennonite church up in, in the Blooming uh, Glen, Pennsylvania, kicking up his heels all over the place, dancing all over the place, glory to God. Because you know what happened? They couldn't even move him. He was ready for five heart bypasses. They had sent him home to pick out his coffin before he died when they did the five by bypasses on him. And the pastor says, come to church, you'll get healed. And then he has a heart attack. But when they called the specialist in to examine him, they had to call a second one in. When they took the x-rays, they had to take three sets because the heart that was in there was not the old heart. It was not the heart that was scarred from years of heart attacks. It was a brand new heart of a 25-year-old athlete. Give Jesus a big hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Now, that's not all. They gave him these breathing tests, you know, that they give you when you have emphysema. He just blew the, the machine out. Poof! God had given him brand new lungs. Then they kept him in there for five, don't oh, wait, wait. They kept him in there for five days. You know why? Checking him for diabetes. Not a sign of diabetes. He'd been on insulin for 37 years. And yet, when a believer walked down there who gets mad at the devil, and I mean to tell you, I get mad at the devil, and I believe in the power of God, and I believe when I lay hands on you, you get healed. And all these believers out there that have been trained are believing exactly the same way as I do, that when they lay hands on you, you are going to be healed. That man has no sign of diabetes. He played on their softball team that summer. They said he hit more home runs than anybody else and ran around the bases more than anybody else. Is anything too hard for God? No. Is there any person here who has any disease that you think is too hard for God? No. All I'm going to say, put your believers up. Put your believers up. Those of you in wheelchairs, those of you on cots up there, get your believers up in the air. Get your believers up in the air. Just believe that God is going to do a supernatural thing in your life. And don't get hung up and say, I want Charles and Francis or I want that lady in that blue dress praying for me. You just receive that person who comes because they got the same Holy Spirit and this is what God is saying to do at this hour I want every every person on the healing team to stand to your feet right now in the name of Jesus because what we're gonna do we're gonna lay we're gonna pass on the anointing of God that we have to you we're gonna ask God to give you the same power to give you the same anointing that God has placed upon us so that when you attack these devils that are gonna be attacked tonight and how many of you believe the devil is gonna really run you saw that one go down the aisle. Hallelujah. I have, <coughs> I have news for you. You're going to see a lot of devils fly out of here tonight. And you people in wheelchairs, don't sit there. Just get up. 
I mean, you don't have to have hands laid on you. You can just let the power of God go in you. Even while I'm speaking right now, there are people that are being healed out there. God's going to make it easy for some of these people on the healing teams because some of these believers are just getting healed out there because your faith is rising up. And within you, things are beginning to happen. You're, all of a sudden, you're beginning to think, this could happen to me, this could happen to me. Get off of that chair right down there in the name of Jesus. That lady in blue, get up right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Walk up these stairs. Walk up these stairs. Come on, Walk over. up these stairs in Hallelujah. the name of Jesus. Look at this. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that is not the devil. That's Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise you, Jesus. I give you the glory. Glory. never have another sick day as long as you live. What do you have? Cancer? You have 12, you had them. Come up here. I want to lay hands on you. Glory to God. I mean, now that you got healed, how many think that was a pretty good demonstration for getting healed? All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Glory thank you, dear Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Where'd you come from? St. Petersburg, put your hands up in the air. Father, I don't even have to know the name of the 12 diseases. I just know that when I looked over there, I saw the glory uh, of God coming down on her. And I thank you, Father, that with you all things are possible. Nothing name. is impossible. Hallelujah. God, glory. I give you the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I give thank you the glory, Jesus. Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' praise name. You, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I just give you the praise and I give you the glory. In Jesus' name. I want you, members of the healing team, Would to raise your hand. Would everyone be seated just a second? You know what? This is the moment that we've waited for. This is the moment that we, the healing teams keep standing. Did you he know Jesus has waited for this moment for 2,000 years? Did you know that these people that are standing with these red ribbons on here are the ones that are going to be doing his work tonight? And did you know when Jesus planned on that, he knew it would work? He knew every one of them will be able to do it, and so that's going to be the exciting thing. I don't care how complicated, how simple it, uh, it is. All of these people know exactly what to do when you walk before them tonight. Father, in Jesus' name. Charles, bring them forward. Okay. I just feel all that the they healing need teams. to come just forward. Up. All of you healing teams, I want you up here because I want I a picture do. of all just, of you. Uh, just down to I'll tell you, I just want to see just these fanatics the floor, who have come from all over the United all States Hallelujah. and three foreign countries. Please, we please. have some pastors who have come from Bermuda. We have some pastor, a pastor who has come from Puerto Rico. We have people from almost every state in the United States who have come here to heal you, who have come here to minister healing to all of you people. These people are fanatics. These people are believers. These people have taken the, the healing training that needs to be taken. They know exactly what to do. All of these doctors up here, doc, uh, and D Dennis Machulia, who, who pastors that fabulous Jubilee Faith Center in Rochester, Minnesota, no, not Rochester, Hastings, Minnesota. He and his wife, Julie, are going to be supervisors. Dr. Whelan and his wife are going to be supervisors. Dr. Owens is going to be a, supervisors, a supervisor. Dr. Dr. Prater is going to be a supervisor. Dr. and Mrs. Leroy are going to be supervisors. They're going to be assisting these people. And if there is a tough case comes along, you're going to do it first. But just in the event you might have one that doesn't, you're going to have some of these people up Not here who do. are going to be specialists along with you. How many of you out there in the audience are believing that God is doing a supernatural thing? You see, this is the moment that you've waited for. This is the moment that Charles and I have waited for because God has said to us, you don't have to do it. Send, you, send my believers out there to do it. I've called you to train them so they can go out there and they can lay hands upon the sick. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, Father, in that name that's above every other name, we just ask you to anoint all of these people, all of these eager faces that we see here. Father, housewives, little Little children, older people, Lord, radio engineers, uh, a man over there that's a uh, that's a, a nursery man. We just thank you, Father, that regardless of what their occupation is, that you have called them for this particular day and this particular time. In Jesus' name, Charles and I pass on to you all of the anointing of God that we have, all of the power of God that we have, all of the gifts of the Spirit that we have. We pass on to you in the 
name you, of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. And Father, we give you the praise, praise and we give you the Jesus. glory in praise. the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Paul said, Timothy, stir up that gift that's within you by the laying on of hands. That's exactly what is being placed here tonight. It's the anointing power of the Spirit of God. It's in Jesus' name. And so healing teams, get ready. We're about to turn you loose and say, sick them. And uh, now, <laughs> hallelujah, it's time, it's time, it's time. Glory, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm about to fall over here. When you clap, the power of God almost knocked me over. Now, uh, there's been a little bit of change in the instructions. So everybody's seated. You listen. We're going to first instruct the healing teams, and then we'll instruct you how to go to the various places. And every one of you, we instruct everyone that's sick here tonight to get healed. Also, when they minister to you, don't look for sickness to remain look for the healing. If you have pain, don't try to find pain. Try to find the absence of pain. Expect God to heal because Jesus said when these people did, it's like Jesus had a photograph of all of them. He knows them personally and he said, you folks, you're going to do it and it's going to happen now. Okay, Matt, would you come over and tell the uh, tell the healing teams uh, any instructions you want to give? How many of you can feel the Spirit of God just moving all over the place in here? See, this is the moment that we've waited for. This is the moment that you have waited for. And this is the moment when you out there are going to get healed. And this is the moment when you're going to have the opportunity to lay hand. There's a pastor from Erie, Pennsylvania. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you could have heard the prophecy he gave yesterday, it was absolutely dynamite. Can I just tell it a little bit again? This was the most interesting thing. God spoke to him and he spoke it out. He said the day will come when Charles and I will have a satellite healing explosion around the entire United States. And then what he said is going to happen. All of these people and all of you out there are going to in your church, in your city, in your state, your county, as we speak the word over, over satellite, you are going to lay hands on the sick wherever you are. And it will be the greatest healing explosion that the world has ever seen because it will not be one city and one church. It will be the entire nation of the United States states. That's what God is saying. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Get ready, get ready, get ready. All right, we have a slight change because of all the folks we have in the balcony. So listen very close, healing team. Those healing teams that were in the doors from 8 to 15 on the outside wall, okay? Those are the doors out there. 8 to 15 and you were stationed on the outside wall all right that group is to go to the upper lobby of the balcony and there will be ushers back there to, to, to direct you where to go because those folks that are in the balcony are going to go to that outer lobby to receive their healing now those workers in the balcony there are chairs in that area so if there's lengthening of legs you will do it in the lobby area of the balcony Okay? If we're ready. All right. <laughs> Sick them. Go to your positions. Go to your positions right now. Every one of your healing teams. And I mean to tell you, you just, all I can say is sick them. You look at them run. Look at these people running down the aisles. They're not walking. They're running down the aisles because they're so anxious to get their hands upon you. I t how many of you are anxious to have them ha lay hands on you? Let me tell you this. You're just going to see something. Now, we're also going to ask this. We're going to ask the healing teams to send back some of the people in here who have been dramatically healed because then we're going to, to let them give a little testimony for the rest of you. Now, the rest of you just hold hold steady out there just hold steady out there you know all i can think about is that song god's got an army marching through the land deliverance is their song and healing in their hands everlasting joy and gladness in their hearts and in this army i've got a part sing it with us god's got an army marching through the land deliverance is their song and healing in their hands 
everlasting joy and gladness in their hearts. And in this army I've got a part. Sing it! Well, God's got an army marching through the land. Deliverance is their song and he in their hands. Everlasting joy and gladness in their hearts. And in this army I've got a part. One more time, yes. Well, God's got an army marching through the land. There they go. Deliverance is their song and, and healing in their hands. And everlasting joy and gladness in their hearts. And in this army I've got a part. Now, how do you know which person to go to? Can I tell you how to know? You can get up and go out the exit door that's the closest to you and it will be the exactly the same as you are walking into the hem of Jesus garment. Okay, as soon as the wheelchairs get out, uh, then Matt, uh, uh, he's a captain of all of our traffic controlling here tonight and he'll instruct those that are ready to be healed. How many of you are now ready to be healed? Okay, get this. It's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, there's no doubt about it. God is moving in an unusual way in this day. The Spirit of God is pouring out so mightily that every one of you are going to have to almost beg God to cancel faith because you're going to have so much faith when you get there that you'll just, well, why believe that you're not going to get healed? Just go ahead and expect it because Jesus said it. And when he says it, it'll happen. So you're going to find it happening tonight. Uh, so Matt, when you see that they're out, then we'll get ready for the next instructions. Do you think you can instruct them now? Hallelujah. All right, outside of each of the doors, from 1 to 22, on either side of the hallway are the healing teams. And you can tell them by their red tags. If you don't go to anybody that does not have a red tag, please. If you're ready to receive your healing, just move into the aisles to the doors that you are and go receive it. Hallelujah. You may move out now just to whichever door and go to whomsoever because that's the ones that are doing the healing tonight. That's where the anointing of God is. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Father, we've done all that you've told us to do. Now, Father, we just leave it in your hands. And we thank you, Father, as we run around this great auditorium and watch what the people are doing. We just thank you, Father, for that supernatural power. And we give you the praise and the glory of Jesus. That's right. In the name of Jesus, in the back of the Lord, yes, we're still and you will as soon as you get out there the healings are going to go just go to anybody that's out there with a red ribbon healing team on and they'll begin to minister to you they know how they're filled with the Holy Ghost they have all the power of God they're standing up in the name of Jesus as oracles of Jesus Christ and your healing is waiting for you in the hall you in the hall
that will be bringing healings back in here. And so, Dwayne, why don't you just entertain us for a minute, okay, on the piano, and Charles and I will be back in just one real quick second, okay? to be healed. What's your first name? Ernie Gunter came all the way from Switzerland. He had written me a letter and he said, I'm coming. And do you know what he came for? To get Ilya Makoshuli and Dasa. Speak in tongues for him right now. Come on. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful that a man will come all the way from Switzerland just to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and to get healed? And I just laid hands on him in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit of asthma to come out of there. I speak new lungs into you, brother, in the name of Jesus. I want to just see you run across that stage, okay? And no puffing. Run across the stage. Run right there. Just run. Look at him go. Yes, look at him running. Look at him running. Come on back here. I tell you, when you get new lungs, you can just... Look at this. You see what he's doing? He can just run. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Hallelujah. What happened to you? Healed from migraine headaches. Seven, you, eight years ago, I have never had a headache since. You were healed eight years ago, and she's never had a migraine headache since then. And I tell you, I can just feel the lungs in this man just expanding right now. Asthma, bad, 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 all the way from Switzerland. And here he gets himself healed. Isn't that beautiful? Ernie Gunter, right? You'll never forget tonight, will you? No, 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 I don't. You'll you don't forget, and we'll come to Switzerland and see you sometime, okay? Oh, praise the Lord. Give Jesus a real big hand on that, would you? Hallelujah. Thank you, dear Jesus. I just... For about 25 years, and I was healed. It just doesn't as free move your neck. No pressure at all. I used to jerk my neck all kinds of ways, Isn't and Pete has uh, gave me a complex, but I've been healed. Praise oh, hallelujah. Give Jesus a praise of it. That is beautiful. Praise the Lord. Hi, sweetheart. What pretty suspenders you got. What happened here? What did you get healed of, sweetheart? I got a new heart. You got a new heart, and it just fits you, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Isn't that neat? And do you love Jesus? Uh-huh. Me too. He is something else, isn't he? And you thank Jesus often for that new, new heart. Hallelujah. Bye-bye, sweet. Hallelujah. You got testimony? Yeah, I had scoliosis. Okay. Listen to the testimony. Scoliosis. What's that stuff? Curvature of the spine. Curvature of the spine. And what happened? My back grew, and it's straight. Uh, did, uh... 
did some special person out there, or did you just find? Believers. Just one of the believers, and, uh, and all the pain left? Yeah. And it, it feels straight? My shoulder would crack when I rolled it. it doesn't shoulder crack. used to crack when I rolled it, it doesn't crack anymore? Give Jesus a thing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Any of this a testimony? What did Jesus do for you, little buddy? Heal my, um, my, uh, was it your stomach? No. Point two, where did he heal? Touch where you... My sore throat. Oh, your sore throat, and it doesn't even hurt? Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, sweetheart. Yes, what was yours? I had a back accident. I had a car accident, and I had uh, dislocated uh, this in my spine. And uh, the team that uh, was upstairs, they, anointed, they were anointed by the Lord, and they prayed for me and with me, and the Lord healed it. Isn't that how long have you had this problem? Since 1975. Ten years, and the back's been hurting all that time? Yeah. And if you could have gone down the hall someplace, found somebody with a red ribbon, not just somebody that has a baptism, and you could have gotten healed. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. Thanks. Say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Ten years, a back problem, and just somebody out in the hall there with a real red, red flag saying, I have had the healing training, healed by the power of God. What was your problem? Forty-eight years ago, I was running down a hill, and a clothesline we caught me right there. there. I was eight years creation. old. And, and in the name of Jesus, all the way to the end, man, Philip, like, to the same length. Hallelujah. Jesus, we command it. Thank you, Jesus. My spine, it's supposed to sit like this in this area. It's straight. I had spurs where it had tried to heal itself, curvature of the spine. I went to one chiropractor, and he wouldn't even touch me. But there was some man prayed, or just demanded that I be healed up there in my spine. It jerked from the top of my head. It just went in sections like that, all the way down to the tailbone. And then my hip just rolled over. Did he grow your leg out or did he grow your arms out? My arms and my legs. I was knock-kneed, bow-legged, and pigeon-toed. Can you hear, folks, what she's saying? I was knock-kneed, bow-legged, pigeon-toed. Uh, what was it, hip? Uh, yes. Totally healed. No pain left, nothing wrong. 10, no, 20, 40. I was 8 years old. I'm 55 now. That is a beautiful miracle. 40-some years. All this problem. God straightened her body out by the power of the Holy Ghost. I took so many aspirins that when I was a child, I had bleeding ulcers. And you had excruciating pain for 40 some years. 40 years of excruciating pain. Somebody out in the hallway, just like Jesus said would happen, ministered to her, and the power of God went down her, straightened everything out, got rid of all that. Say glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God. What do we got here in our hands? Well, sir, uh, I had a broken leg. <laughs> he had a broken leg. Isn't that beautiful? When did you break your leg? Uh, it was in May 24th. It broke my back in three places as well. Broke your back three places and your leg once. Have you been in pain? Quite a bit. Quite a bit of pain. And tell me what, did you find some big king or something out there? No, just an average person. Just an average person, man or woman? Uh, I think it was one of each. One of each. And that be a healing team. Uh, now, anybody want to buy a pair of crutches? They're ready to go to somebody else because God did a work in you. Isn't that fantastic? Can you bend over? Yes, sir. No pain left? Don't hurt me at all. And where was the bone broken? Right straight through here. Right. Well, I mean, that's a bad one, wasn't it? Places it just broke over. One, two, you three. You can twist around. Yes, sir. No pain. Total freedom. Give Jesus a praise offering. Hallelujah. Take your crutches. Hold them up in the air. Go on your way. Hi, sweetheart. What did Jesus do for you? I had a real bad stomachache, and I got saved with just one drink of water. Is that right? He had a bad stomachache, and he got healed, and a drink of water. How do say, thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. That's a good boy. Thank you now. All right, praise God. What was your problem? I had a broken shoulder. Just a broken shoulder. Can you imagine which one was broken? And what could you not do with it? Well... I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, do it like this. She, she wouldn't do it like that because it was broken and it was not broken anymore, is it? No. Was it a lady or man or a kid or what? 
in an automobile accident. No, I mean, but out in the hallway. Um, it was a couple of women. Just a couple of women out there, ordinary women, or ordinary men, we don't care, do we? And the, what did they do? Did they grow your arms out? Or no. Uh, she just stole my uh, shoulder bone to uh, knit together. To get together? Knit together. To knit together. She just said, in Jesus' name, shoulder bone, knit together, and guess what happened? It knitted together. Now lift it all the way up like that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Praise the Lord. Now keep thanking him and tell often that beautiful testimony. And what did God do for you? He delivered me from a spirit of cancer. Cancer? Did you have pain in your body? I've been having problems with my lymph system. I didn't that, did you have pain when you come tonight? I have a, quite a bit of swelling. Quite a bit of swelling. Did it go down? A period of time. Yes, it has been. It just, it's been going down. It just, you know, you got healed, don't you? Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you. Healed of cancer in Jesus' name. Uh, yeah, what, what was wrong with you? Well, I had two pins here, steel pins, uh -huh. and then she came over and she grew my fingernail. Did you not have a fingernail on that? You'd, now this little girl, this little girl had, a, this when you were born, you had this hand this way? Uh, just hold it up like that. Now, uh, the, hand, the finger, this finger started growing. Now you can depend on it keeping growing because you're going to have full hand. How much did it grow out? It grew out about a fourth of an inch. It grew about a fourth of an inch and you didn't have any fingernail here? No. No fingernail, but... The steel pins in these, Do, and the pins are gone. They don't even hurt. You can't even. Could you feel them before? Mm -hmm. You could feel steel pins in there. I wonder what God did with that steel. But look at that. That's gone. She got a new fingernail. Uh, the thing has grown a part of that. Father, how we praise you for a whole new hand with beautiful fingernails. And Father, I notice that there's only three fingers. So in Jesus' name, we command five. One of them a thumb, one of them this finger. And we thank you for perfect fingers with perfect bones. And we thank you that you took that pain. Isn't that beautiful? You know, I believe that thing is still growing, don't you? You watch what will happen just every day. Say, thank you, Jesus. Just tap him with the other hand. Isn't that fantastic?